Hey there, is it, is it smooth? It's the smoothie, Dave. Robert Wallace made a video talking about the way that people debate on YouTube and how so much of it seems to be about uh, ponage. And uh, he mentioned how he prefers to have a conversation. And conversations are much better as far as that goes. It's usually, it's, it, it's a lot less about ponage, but sometimes it still turns into that. Sometimes something that you wanted to just be a conversation still ends up turning into a debate. And a poor debate at that. Um, and sometimes video responses where you kind of go back and forth between, you know, that you, you show the video that you're responding to and then you clip to you saying, uh, uh, you know, what you want about the video and, and so on back and forth. A lot of times those turn into just a pure ponage thing. And people often aren't willing to give credit uh, where it's due from, you know, the person that they're responding to. Like the uh, BuzzFeed video. <coughs> What was it 35 questions for men uh, where most of them weren't really questions they were declarations many of them being rather misandric but there were a few things they brought up that were valid and in all of the response videos I saw to that I didn't see one that was giving people credit where it was deserved and so, you know, I made my response video that got DMCA'd, and then I put it up on Vimeo, because um, I, I, you know, I gave them credit where I thought it was deserved, but then, you know, told them where I thought they were wrong. And I know now if I make another video like that, it, I'll have their video in a little, you know, a little square, and my video as the main, and hopefully it'll avoid another DMCA kind of thing. Um, But uh, then I think about a hangout that I was that I was in initially just in text, but then later I actually got into the hangout. In text, what I mean is you know the little that, that little sidebar uh, on YouTube, and it had uh, Mr. D. Wayne, a sketchy white dude, uh, one the guy who has a really long goatee. I always forget what his name is, and then one other person who I don't think was there for the whole hangout. But anyway. Um, they were taking, picking apart a video by a, a really young uh, female feminist, and it was just all about ponage. And when they came up to, uh, a couple times to uh, how, you know, she was saying that guys are taught to hide their emotions except for anger, and they started to make fun of that, and I was like, wait, 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 no, what she says is actually true. And eventually I got them to admit, well, okay, I guess that's kind of true. But it just it's just kind of interesting. Um, and that makes me go think further about um, social pressures. And how there are a lot of social pressures that people feel they need to come to. Lots of them. If you really start to break about part how many social pressures there are and how many of those social pressures we we make ourselves come to those standards, you know, it, it can boggle the mind when you really start to think about it. And, you know, those social pressures can even go into the things that make us take for granted, let's say as a, as a white person, something that I will take for granted, you know, when I don't think about it. Because if, if a lot of people are taking something for granted, um, then, and they're not ever talking about it, or discussing individual decisions in regards to things, then it's going to make others, that taking it for granted mindset can spread too. And that's kind of part of social pressures. Um, 
maybe that seems a little far-fetched, but to me it fits right in. Um, you know, there's a thing of, oh, uh, if you're a man, don't cry ever. It's just like, what? That's messed up. But it's something that's pushed onto us. I mean, it doesn't matter whether or not it's uh, during a time when uh, it's not going to affect, negatively affect, uh, it's not going to be an inconvenience to you or anyone else, but you're still taught, no, don't cry because you're not a real man if you cry. Kind of crap. You know, I mean, I understand saying don't cry if it's a, a situation where, uh, you know, for you to just suddenly break down during this time you're supposed to be doing something important, yeah, that's probably not a good time to cry. You know, wait till you're done doing whatever it is that's important, and then and then if you need to, you know, let it all out. Um, there's a lot of pressures, you know, and, and as I've talked about, there's pressure, all these pressures that are put onto women. Lots of pressures that they're supposed to, still these pressures that they're supposed to be docile. And when someone gets taught that they're supposed to be docile and that they're not supposed to be, well, they're not supposed to be manly, that's for sure, you know, with the way that our society is, when I say that's for sure, um, then during the times when they really feel they need to have their, their say, when they feel that they need to display their opinions, it will come out in a way that's going to be considered bitchy. And that ends up being viewed at as very negatively. When with, with good reason, but the thing is, people shouldn't be under these pressures to begin with that they should be docile. You know? And when you think about makeup, now, as compared to early 80s, the 70s, I mean, the stuff that people wear now makes, some of it makes Tammy Faye Baker look like she, you know, wasn't wearing enough. And who's that other Christian lady on, on CBN, Christian Broadcasting Network, who always has this big fluffy hair that has a slightly purplish hue, who wears all this massive amounts of makeup to, you know, even she now doesn't look like she really wears that much because of these pressures that we push onto women. I mean, my God, the the, the techniques and all this stuff that that's, I mean, it's like... <laughs> It's gotten so refined that it's like, well, uh, you look like uh, you're playing with crayons if you don't spend that much time on your makeup nowadays, you know? And it's, it's interesting how, like, whenever there's there are uh, some memes out there that will show celebrities without makeup. People are just amazed, like, wow, they look like a regular person. Yes, they do look like a regular person because every everyone is really just a regular person. Um, I don't know. I, I, I think about just, I try to put on the shoes of women at times, to, to just think about what is it that they actually go through? What are these social pressures? And you know, I, I, I have a hard time blaming the people that feel they have to conform to the social pressures for coming to those social pressures, for, for giving in to those social pressures. I have a hard time blaming those people. Because even the smartest of people can can end up giving into social pressures. Even the smartest of people can be manipulated. Even the smartest of people can be cattle. So this sort of thing isn't a isn't any sort of measurement of people's intelligence. Um, so. 
you know, I think we should try to work at reducing these social pressures. Now, one way to do it is to promote people to just be themselves. And maybe, maybe some of the things that Quintka was trying to shove forth is that we should be just trying to be ourselves. That might be part of his message. And if that's his primary message, then to me, he's really articulating his point very poorly. Um... You know, it's it's more of it's been more of a thing where they don't have to do that, and it's almost like there's this judgment on them because they are, um, or as if when they do give into social pressures, that that's really a a, a measurement of the, the that's what they really want to do, even if that doesn't represent who they are at all. So. But I, I think we need to talk against these social pressures that are put onto people. Talk against these things that are pushed in media. Talk against these things pushed in movies. Talk against these things that are pushed out there by um, the fashion industry. We should be pushing against these things that are leftovers of a patriarchal society. Um, I mean, we don't really live in a patriarchy, not even, not even close, really. You know, you want a patriarchy, go to the Middle East, you know. But we have leftovers of it, small, little bitty leftovers, even things like uh, a woman feeling that she needs to change her last name to the guy's last name when they get married. You know, that's part of, that's, you know, leftovers of a patriarchal society. Um... You know, and people should, you know, we, we should both be preaching for people to be themselves completely. Because, I mean, if, if everyone was just being themselves and didn't care about social pressures, social pressures would cease to exist. But that's never going to happen. So, you know, we should be ourselves, lead by example in that regard, try to get others to be themselves, and also speak against and try to do something about these social pressures that exist. So people, you know, so maybe in the future people won't feel like they're forced into things. So... Because again, if, if we really, really give it some thought as to how many things that we are pressured into feeling like we need to be, it's mind-boggling. I mean, even just, there's all these little things. All these little things. Um, here's one that I've talked about before, you know, and people are gonna think, well, that's a kind of a silly thing to mention. Well, it's not really. Um, toilet paper. Okay, you're 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 at a house. You're at an apartment. You're not you're not at some workplace, or you have to take a shit, you know, at the workplace. But even something like toilet paper, don't actually clean your ass. You know, take take you know, you have some sort of shit on your skin, as the skin of your your ass. And here, let's smear this uh, piece of paper on it, and and then call it clean. You know, social pressures. Things that we uh, just consider the norm, and that's, well, that's just the way it is. Well, that doesn't have to be the way that it is. Now, again, maybe some of this type of thing is what Quintco was trying to shove forth, but he didn't sure didn't put it in the forefront. Most of his message, in the way that I was interpreting it, was that, there was a lot of judgment going on. And he was offended that there are people who have the opposite judgment of him. I think it'd be best if we we had less of that judgment and more just of the pushing of people to be themselves. So... So the, the moral of this story is be yourself.
You know, just be you. If you like something, like it. And you know what? Be proud of liking it. Be proud that you're that you are an individual. And if there's things you don't like, then don't like them. But don't judge others that do. You know, as long as you're not taking away someone's right to make their own decisions, you know, you're not doing anything that's negative to anyone. You know, just enjoy it. Enjoy being you, enjoy the things you like, and try to have a good time.